Hi there. Um, so today we'll talk about uh, KUKA, um, the project with the nice bird. This is my uh, Who Am I slide. I'm a Jurian, as already told to you. I'm uh, from uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands, doing freelance work, um, uh, development, and uh, working mostly on KUKA. So I'm one of the developers. Uh, today we'll uh, start with an introduction to KUKA. And then I will talk a bit, little bit about uh, um, new developments I've been working on. Uh, so there's a few new features that also the Kuka users here probably won't know yet. Um, has anyone used Kuka before? Nice, not bad. Um, so sandboxing. Uh, what does the sandbox look like? Uh, you have different kinds of uh, projects with sandbox. This is not like uh, hardening your laptop or anything. It's for automated uh, malware analysis. Um, so basically, um, you can do it on an appliance or you can have your own setup at home or just run it on your own laptop like I do. Um, you can use it uh, for um, analyzing malware to get a basic, um, basic knowledge of what it does, how it works, and the kind of things you can expect it to do because um, KUKA logs analyze, uh, get, gets like the behavior from it. From it. So a few problems um, that you might want to take into account when setting it, setting it up is do you want to um, process high volumes? Do you want to automate it? Or are you in, a, for example, an incident response team? So then you probably only want to analyze those samples that you get, get through email or something, so then you don't need a super big machine to run thousands of tas tasks a day. And do you want to integrate it um, for this kind of thing? You have to extend it a little bit, but it's uh, open source, so it's easy to extend. Um, pros, you can um, cook automates everything for you. So uh, if you want to do 10,000 anal analysis a day, then you can do it if you have a big enough machine. Um, anyone can use it, especially with some uh, recent improvements. It's easier to set up and um, to use it, but I will get back to that later. Um, and if used correctly, it can be very effective. It can also be ex ex expensive. Uh, Kuko is free to use, but you still need hardware. Um, so it, it is cheaper than the commercial version, commercial uh, products, but it takes some, uh, some money to get started, of course. Also, um, a sample might not run in Cuckoo Sandbox due to a bug, every software has bugs, or um, it might not run in this particular environment. So if, uh, if you have some APT sample that's targeted at some special environment that requires some software that's not installed by default on Windows XP, then it might not run or you don't see everything that's happening. Uh, so Sandbox. It's um, open source, uh, GPL v3. You can use it, you can customize it. If you do, please uh, send a pull request. Um, anyone can get started. It's on GitHub, so um, GitHub slash box. you will find it there. Or just go to the website. Um, so why? Um, it was started uh, about four, four and a half years ago by Claudio. Um, and open source makes it really easy for people to modify it or see how it works or um, uh, change it to your own needs. So a little bit of history. Um, four years ago it started. Um, half a year ago we had uh, release 1.1. And a few weeks ago we had uh, a zero day. Um, somebody sent an email to us, hey, um, this particular function uh, does not work as you think it does. So basically anyone, um, if you um, execute a, a particular um, sample, uh, he had the Python script. Um, and uh, there's this feature in Kuko to upload files from the, from the virtual machine to the host. Uh, so it transferred the file from the virtual machine to the host. And then we were using uh, the Python function os path join. 
but if you give it an absolute buff, then um, it returns the latest absolute buff. So in this example, um, you see, um, let's see, you see uh, our directory, and then slash etc password, and it will just return etc password. So we would overwrite. You could overwrite any arbitrary file, which is indirectly remote code execution. So um, if you were running 1.1, please uh, patch your systems. Uh, what you need to know for Kuko is uh, basic Linux, virtual machines. Uh, it's useful to know a bit about Windows APIs because uh, if you go to the raw data that's being e uh, exported by Kuko, then you will get a lot of low-level uh, Windows stuff. It's written in Python. Um, really nice. Python is awesome. Uh, so how does it work? Um, basically, there's one Kuko daemon, and the daemon um, gets a task. Uh, if you submit a task, it will then prepare the analysis. It starts up a virtual machine. Uh, in the virtual machine, it starts um, the, Kuko, the Kuko process for in the virtual machine, and it, is, it executes the malware. And then uh, the, the, the component in, inside the virtual machine will send back all the logs to the host. And then when the analysis has finished, the uh, results will be analyzed and processed into a report. So I think it's almost demo time. Yeah. I will just quickly show you um, one analysis in Kuko. I think you can read this. Okay, so I just um, submitted some ransomware malware, and now I will run. Now I'm running Kuko. So the font's a little bit big for all the text. But basically, it uh, starts the VM. And in a few seconds, uh, when, once VirtualBox has um, set up all the network stuff, it will run Kuko. And you see now that the Explorer has, Explorer has gone and it's popping up some funny ransomware that's asking you in French, I guess, uh, to pay. Um, so that's Kuko for you. Hmm? Oh, really? Nice. <laughs> um, so this is uh, the web interface. Kuko has. Uh, API, uh, but also web interface. So if you just want to look through it quickly, uh, that's easy through here. Uh, some basic um, file file information like the hashes, Yara rules, virus total, gate detected 25 out of four, out of 42. That's very much for ransomware, I guess. Um, and then you see a lot of um, IOC IOC related information, like the file names being used. Also, some stuff from uh, Internet Explorer in there. Um, registry keys, mutexes, everything that you will want to know. And you see that it injected into two other processes. So it injected into Explorer or started Explorer, not sure. And also Internet, um, Internet Explorer, maybe for web uh, network stuff, and I'm not really sure. Uh, so that's um, basically how Google works. Um, back to the slides. So, um, as I had already told a little bit, everything is a uh, module. It's in, it's in Python, so you can easily um, add a new module and Google will automatically pick it up. So, if you want to run something in the in the virtual machine during an analysis, you just write a, 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 a module, and it will run in there, and you get the results back right away. So. Um, well, if you run Kuko, what's your goal? Um, how many samples? Blah, blah, blah. Already told this. Um, so the environment is quite important. Um, for example, if you want to run PDFs, possibly with exploits in it, then of course you're going to need Adobe PDF. So when you create a virtual machine, uh, you have to take this kind of things into mind. 
Also, um, <coughs> also, um, if you if you wanna um, if you have a particular version of Adobe PDF that's vulnerable, then you might want to take um, f multiple machines, each with a different version of Adobe, and then you can see if one uh, is vulnerable or not. Uh, installation in a nutshell, VirtualBox, download Google, uh, just a zip file, uh, installs, install some dependencies, so to do the web interface you need web interface stuff in Python, all the things. And then finally, um, most important is configuration, there's a couple of configuration files, um, you have to for example add each virtual machine that you want to use in the configuration. And then um, you're you're in Python. So um, to submit a task, you have multiple options. Uh, you can use uh, the submit utility, which I did just now. You can use the API. You can use the web interface. Or if you're feeling lucky, you can use the Python API. Um, so lots of things and lots of ways. Uh, when you submit a file, there's multiple options that you can optionally add. For example, you can uh, force an analysis package. So if you give an exe file, it will uh, usually think it's an exe file, so it will be executed as an exe. But if you want to submit a PDF file and still run it as an exe for whatever reason, then you can specify this. You can also change the default timeout. By default, it's one or two minutes. Maybe you want to do an, anal an analysis for 10 minutes. Uh, change priority, machine, uh, tags, and the memory dump. So the memory dump is useful if you're um, going to use volatility. Um, up to you, I'm not a volatility exper expert. And the tags is uh, quite useful. So if you have multiple versions of Adobe PDF Reader, then you want maybe want to use tags so you can say, this machine has Adobe 6 and this machine is Adobe 9. And then later, if you submit, you can um, say which, which machine you want to analyze with using text. So uh, the results are stored in uh, directory storage analysis slash ID. And there you have the reports. Um, by default, there's various um, reporting modules. So the uh, we report in JSON, which is useful if you want to do scripting. Uh, HTML, you can do XML stuff and whatever you want. Or you can write your own um, if you want to integrate it with your systems. And in the results, you will see uh, various different things. So you have the API calls, uh, the low level window stuff, uh, file dumps. So if a file was written, uh, it will be dumped and you can. You can uh, check it, or you can even submit it afterwards. Uh, so this is useful um, if, I don't know, some uh, C2 configuration file is being written, that you can just read it out. Uh, IOCs, so registry keys, file names, IP addresses, that kind of thing. Uh, signatures, um, you can have uh, signatures. So you can say, if this happens, this happens, and this happens, then I think it's uh, Zeus or whatever malware, and d using the signatures, you can quickly see, okay, this is probably this kind of um, malware, or this particular key was, register key was being accessed, so maybe it's this kind of malware. Um, screenshots, uh, for example, for the ransomware thingy just now, it's uh, nice to have screenshots of what has happened, so you can look. And um, network traffic, also important. Uh, you can get the pcap file and use whatever you want to use for whatever. Um, two comp core components. Uh, you have the core, which is running on the host, and you have the analyzer, which is running in the virtual machine. Um, so basically, like I said earlier, uh, inside the virtual machine, there's the analyzer, which instruments the Adobe PDF reader or the, the malware sample, and it sends back this results to the host which it will then be um, re um, 
processed. So a few core mo modules. Uh, we have various uh, machinery modules, as we call them. So we have a different module for VirtualBox, uh, for VMware, KVM. Um, so we handle most of the um, different kinds of machineries. Also uh, working on bare metal. Um, there were some guys from Mitra, I think, who were um, working on it and submitted a pull request. Have not tested it yet, but should be good. So then you can do, um, you can take a regular laptop, um, like this one for example, and have a real environment. Um, so like no no uh, no virtual machine is involved then, but instead you're just running it on a real machine. So malware malware that does checking if it's in a virtual machine will then will then run because it's actually running on a laptop. Um, so uh, processing modules. Uh, we process the low level results into somewhat higher level, for example, extracting all the file names, etc. Um, you can do more processing if you like. It's uh, all extendable. There's also a uh, Yara support and Firebase Total um, integrated. So if you have your Java rules, you can automatically run those as well. Signatures. Uh, there's a few. There's a few um, sig signatures in our community. Uh, so sometimes people have a signature they want to put in the community, and you can just download them, download them, and put them in, in Kuko. And then you have all the signatures for free. But there's not too many if in there, unfortunately. So if you have any to share, it's always good. Because sharing is caring. Um, analyzer modules. So we have the various analyzer modules, modules uh, one for um, analyzing PDF files, one for running a Python script, one for running an .exe file, or uh, uh, running uh, Microsoft Office files. And if you have your own application or file format that you want to support, for example, um, maybe Word has a configuration file, I don't know, and you want to do that, then you can just create your own module, as always. Um, and then there's uh, auxili auxiliary, so one that, that takes, takes the screenshots and one that uh, emulates the mouse and clicks at things. I will get back to that later. So uh, the monitor. The monitor is the low-level thing, which I develop mostly. Uh, it does the DLL injection, and then it hooks various functions, uh, a bit more than 220 at the moment. So it, uh, this thing is used uh, to capture all the uh, Windows functions that are being used, which you can then see back in the re in the report. And basically, a um, bunch of low-level stuff, um, which is kind of funny, but not going to uh, not going to too much into detail today. Um, a few API categories. So, 220 functions is quite some. So we have a few categories. Uh, well, crypto, uh, so, for example, cryptography, uh, exception handlers, files, network functions, uh, stuff related to processes and threats, registry, user interface. So, um, if malware looks for the window from Explorer or something, um, you can see this by find window, export, or explore or something, and it will get the user interface category. Uh, some recent updates. I've been working on 64-bit support. Um, the monitor has um, should be working, but the analyzer from um, from Kuko, uh, the Python stuff, is still only 32-bit. So have to integrate it sometime. Uh, API signatures. Not sure why I put that in there. <laughs> um, a, a stack trace. So uh, it's sometimes it's useful to see like um, when a, a, a function is being called, uh, by which functions it, w it got there. So um, I think this picture, yeah. So for example, here I have um, one example of uh, doing F open to open a file. And at the end, it uh, ends up in empty create file, which is like um, the thing that does a syst system call in Windows. And in the stack trace, you see um, this is the sample, the 401. Then you have F open, uh, create file, create file, and then it ends up in here. This is also useful when I'm uh, 
developing it because uh, if something crashes, I can take the, the, the stack trace and I have a good indication where it might have crashed. Um, also documentation, which is new for me. So you can now read how the monitor works online instead of in the source code. Um, Anti-sandboxing, with um, sandboxes getting more popular, it is uh, more common for f uh, malware to detect virtual machines, sometimes even Cuckoo. Um, so what they do is, for example, uh, checking the hardest name of VirtualBox, and then it, it says by default uh, VBox underscore HDD or something. So the malware is like, oh, well, th I know that hard disk. I'm not going to run in this environment. So um, when you set up your VMs, you have to m try to uh, make it as not detectable as possible. But this is uh, kind of tricky. There's a lot of things that you can do. Um, I will get back to that in a moment. Uh, some other stuff we, we do is anti-sleep. So basically, uh, when the malware runs the first time, it is quite common in practice that they wait for like 10 minutes before actually running. So they just wait for 10 minutes, and because an analysis is only one or two minutes usually, you will not get um, any results. So what we do is when we see it, that it's trying to sleep for 10 minutes, then we just um, don't sleep, basically, and it runs right away. Um, this is quite, um, uh, it works quite often, so it's good, pretty good. Uh, we have a mouse monitor. Uh, so, for example, if you have a self-unpacking thing, like a WinRAR, um, uh, that's actually, whatever. Uh, so if you have like WinRAR, there's like a next button, next button, next button, extract. Uh, so we, um, we have a, a thingy inside the virtual machine, which basically looks for these buttons and clicks them. And um, the mouse monitor is something else. Uh, there's uh, the upclicker malware. And what it does is it installs a hook uh, using a Windows API, uh, set, window, set, set Windows hook XA with uh, hook identifier 14, which means I want to get all the uh, events when the mouse being clicked. And what it does then is I, uh, the malware only runs after three clicks have been done. So you have to click three times and then the malware will, will start. And obviously, normally, that doesn't happen in the virtual machine, which is why we have this thing that clicks around. Um, so actually, in Windows, there's two events for this. Uh, there's the click up and the click down. So when you press the, the mouse, there's you first go down and then up. There's two separate events for this. So we had this code um, to do the up clicking. And then some other malware family came around, and they were looking for down clicks. So we didn't have support for that. And then Mark, uh, another developer of us, he uh, added one line of code, and then it was working. <laughs> so that was quite nice. Um, yeah. So anti-virtualization, uh, quite painful. Um, you can try to uh, hide as much as possible but it's uh, really kind of a pain. So if any of you know good, know common techniques, please share so we can integrate them. Uh, for example, uh, for VirtualBox, if you install the guest editions, uh, you find like uh, processes running, like uh, VBox servers, you find uh, libraries from v VirtualBox, uh, you find, uh, well, this tray tool thingy, so all kinds of different things. And uh, basically, this is being used to detect it. So don't install the guest editions. Um, that's for sure. But there's also other stuff, like uh, the BIOS version probably says something like VBox and all these kinds of things. So if you know registry keys or files or blah, 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 let us know. And uh, we will uh, add them. Because uh, I created uh, a tool, VMcloak. It is a tool for automated uh, 
generation of virtual machines. Released it, I think, a month ago, roughly. Uh, so because setting up a virtual machine is, takes so much time, um, I figured, why not make a tool for it? So basically, uh, you give it a uh, Windows installer image, I image, and you give the serial key and optionally some other um, parameters. Then you wait for 10 minutes while VirtualBox um, installs um, the Windows, and then it sets up Cuco. And then uh, it, we try to cloak some stuff, so the registry keys and all this kind of thing that you saw earlier, uh, it's being randomized, or at least that's the idea. And um, yeah, it also does a bunch of other stuff, like uh, setting up the network, because each virtual machine has its own IP address, and we use uh, static IP addresses. So if you have 30 virtual machines, for example, you need to set up uh, 30 different IP addresses. And if you do this manually, uh, been there, done that, not a very good idea. You'll make errors, and it's very painful and, and takes a long time to do. Um, it also uh, does installing, uh, for example, .NET Framework or Adobe PDF Reader, um, all, all these kinds of things. So it's basically, the idea is to basically um, have this tool, and it actually al already works that just does everything for you and makes it life easier. Um, so the cloaking, very important. Already mentioned it mostly. But um, it also randomizes the virtual machine as much as possible, as in all the factors that we know of. And the results is um, virtual machines, yay. So uh, <laughs> basically, um, if you have a big machine and you want, want to set up uh, 30 machine, 30 virtual machines, you just run a command, the command uh, in a for loop, and you wait a few hours and you're good to go. So this is um, a quick guide to use it. Um, you have uh, you need to mount uh, the Windows installer uh, thingy. So uh, you make directory, blah, blah. And then you run VM cloak with the recommended settings, the VM name, the serial key. And that's it. So what used to take up to two hours, especially the first time, is now uh, a matter of a few seconds, excluding coffee time. Uh, Long-term analysis, something else I've been working on. Uh, basically, Kuko usually runs for one or two minutes. But if you want to do long-term uh, analysis of uh, a particular bot or something, you want to see new IP addresses, new host names, this kind of thing, then it makes sense to run Cuckoo for, I don't know, a, a week or a month, if you, if you want. And uh, this is where long-term analysis comes in. So you get um, new host names, IP addresses, dropped files, so like uh, the updated malware. Um, can be pretty useful. Uh, distributed KUKA is uh, a, another feature. So, well, like a, a, a side script. So you can run this one uh, REST API. And this one REST API talks with other KUKA machines. So basically, um, if you have, for example, five big servers, they talk with the REST API. And uh, you only have one interface to uh, do a lot of, um, to do all the analysis. So if you have a big machine, uh, you can do probably do 15,000 or 30,000 or something analysis a day per per server. So if you want to do more than that, uh, you just use most multiple servers and hook them up with a distributed script. So uh, scale it up as much as you like, big data, malware analysis, to extract all the IOCs. Mm. Conclusions. I think I'm pretty fast already. Damn it. Um, that was 60 slides. Oh well. Um, let's see. How much time do I have left? 20. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, first of all, any questions before I go to some more, um, before I show some more Kuka stuff? A few demos. Yes?
Okay, so uh, hello, you said about anti-VM detection and what about uh, detection of cocoa uh, itself? Mm. Uh, so we have not seen too much malware that says we detect cocoa. Um, it has happened once that I know of. Um, but yeah, um, if we find the, way the, the techni technique they used, uh, then of course we try to evade it if it's possible. Um, but otherwise, there's not much to it. So this one, um, sa this one, one sample, it uh, was some Visual Basic 6 stuff, and it was really nasty. So Visual Basic 6 P code, which is like this custom bytecode thingy from 1998. So I wrote um, instrumentation tool for it, to, so you could see exactly what's happening. But even still, I was not able to figure out how it is detecting KUKA was doing really weird stuff with uh, writing random data to random processes. At least it looked like that to me. So as we know of, not too much malware is um, really detecting Cuckoo. But if you see it, let me know. Um, answer your question? Uh, just a quick question, um, less related to Cuckoo, related to VM Cloak. Uh, there is a project called Vagrant, Vagrant uh, app. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, why actually you, you wanted to, to put m effort to basically develop, okay, overlapping features and why not basically somehow integrating a plugin into Vagrant or somehow? Yeah, so basically um, I, I know of the, the project, but I've never used it. Um, I don't know, just, uh, I, I, how, how old is uh, Fagrant? Well, it's, I guess it's several years old and uh, uh, the guy is uh, actually se also selling support to, to cloud okay. providers. Basically, many cloud providers actually mm -hmm. use it for deploying like uh, farms of yeah, yeah, cloud sure. VMs and so on. Uh, so, just... Um, it has I'm also support for Windows and all. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm, um, at the time, I didn't know of the tool, I, I think. But also um, because VM Cloak um, tries to do the cloaking part, right? <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, you can do all the things that we want to do with uh, uh, with Vagrant. For example, um, before Windows is being installed, we all, uh, you set the BIOS stuff, so like randomizing the hardware names. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure it can do that, but didn't feel like figuring out. Was um, uh, it's kind of funny to see how Windows does the installing. So we found a few ways to execute code at the right th right times and just went with it. So mo mostly because um, the cloaking part of it, I guess. But I'm sure you can also do it with Vagrant. Have you used Vagrant uh, for for Kuka? Yeah, okay. Well, I have not heard anyone use it for Kuka, so, well, uh, yeah, no. Any other questions? No. Okay, so another question. There is a project on GitHub called Pivnipot. Who? Pivnipot. P-W-N-I-Pot. Lots of people are using it uh, together with Coco. It's like Emmet. Oh, okay. Okay, so you don't know anything no. about it. Okay. Um, can look it up later. So I will um, <coughs> show some more Coco stuff. Um, basically, the I will just get you a bit, little bit uh, familiar, familiarized with um, what the uh, web interface sees and does, and a little bit like a workshop. Um, yeah, so we had already um, analyzed one sample. Let's see. Hmm. I don't know. Um, so in the top you have all the stuff. Oh, that's just this, this thing. Um, I don't use the web interface often. Um, not really sure. Yeah, I guess um, 
I guess we'll just finish because, you know, I hadn't prepared for this. Um, Sorry. Collected uh, all that data about registry from uh, hooking, yeah, uh, the injection and then hooking. So, uh, what about uh, static analysis of of registry? Do you consider it uh, helpful? You know, uh, registry about uh, of machine which is not uh, compromised, and then comparing it with uh, with compromised machine. You mean like doing a diff, like something like this? Um, could do, but uh, I think. Exporting the registry takes t quite some time. Um, if you're interested in that, we could add a feature if you like. <laughs> yes, and another question. The, I think, I'm not sure, that malware uh, mm, does similar thing, yes? It uh, hooks to the function. Isn't it possible that malware hooks to the same function you did and uh, you didn't uh, get the data because uh, malware you know, hooks after you? Yeah, so uh, it's quite easy to bypass Kuko. There's like a few dozen ways to do it. If you're n well, but yeah, for what from what we see, 99.9% uh, is just fine. Okay, thanks. So uh, thanks for attending. Um, if you want to brag about your Kuko setup or if you have other questions, don't hesitate to uh, talk to me. Thanks.